kingdom of God. This day was one of the greatest days that you can imagine. And I can say this of 90% of every day of my life. Because every day of my life is how can we advance the kingdom of God better, better, better. And God gave us great ideas today for the Philippines that will also help the rest of the world. Convergence, convergence, convergence. Then five. If your son comes to you, Dad, what is life all about? The answer is clear, and those in training, you know this already. Life is about God on a journey. And the only thing for us is to find our role on God's journey. That's our answer to your, to your child. I just add now, in the modern day terms, life is not about you, and life is not about me. Life is about God on a journey, and we've got to find our assignment on God's journey. That is what life is all about. My friend, I want to say this to you. If there is not convergence in your life, you will never have peace of having a significant life. That's it. It's the only way to find real peace of having a significant life that you are happy with. I have a few um, friends. Now that I'm 61 years old, it is quite uh, funny to talk to some people. A friend of mine, because I ask these straight questions, a friend of mine phoned me the other day. I, I am a South African, so I'm African. I live in South Africa, Cape Town. Please, most beautiful place in the world, come visit. Okay. I live in Cape Town. So, um, so I got a phone call from Germany. A friend of mine in Germany, German friend. He said, can I just tell you a quick story? He said, today, I had the most amazing discussion with a friend, old friend of mine. I met him like many, many years ago. Both of them are now old. This particular one is older than him. This guy, uh, I think was, when he made the call, was 80 years old or something like this. This friend called him and said, his name is Herman. He said, Herman, you know what I realized today? When I was 26 years old, I inherited 60 million Deutsche Mark. From his forefathers, from his parents and their parents and so on. So he inherited a lot of money. 60 million Deutsche Mark. He said, I was 26. Now I'm 80. For more, for almost 60 years, 55 years, 54 years, I worked myself to a standstill. Like 12, 13, 14, 16 hours a day. With 60 million Deutsche Mark. Just to make more money. You know what I just discovered today? Because of the credit crunch, this was 2008 when this phone call came. Because of the credit crunch, I lost all the money I made during my life. We counted today, and my accountant wrote back today, all we have in the bank is 60 million dollars a month. In 50, Four years, I did not make one cent. And now my life is over. I lost my wife, divorce, children, lost them nowhere in life. I'm going to die soon. So, what should I do now? I wish each of you had this opportunity of mine, I definitely don't wish that you had a child that died, but the opportunity of mine to be forced to think about life in a very intense way and make a right decision. Because my child died when I was 27 years old, 27 years old, and now 61. But because of that, I could live life absolutely fully Great family life. Success, if you wish. Enough money. I have more money, actually, than I need. And I never made, I never went out to make money. But I impacted many, many lives. Because my focus was a life of significance. It is possible. And it's even possible, like in my case, for 26 years, I have not slept in my house for 120 nights per year. 
the last 26 years, did not sleep in my bed. Like tonight, I will not sleep in my bed. And still, great family, enough money, and great significance that I can leave for generations to come. It is possible, but it is only possible, only possible when you have convergence in your life centered around the real important thing in life. And I want to encourage you to do life like that. Okay, let me come now to the next uh, one because you want to listen to my wife. And that is, and then I'll come back. And that is this. <clears throat> if you center around this, then your children know life is not about you, life is not about them. Life is about someone that will outlive us all. It's about God who is the center of the universe. Life is about God. And then when you speak to your children, you don't give them your ideas. You give them God ideas. That's much better than your ideas. <laughs> it will outlast you, my friend, for many years. So you give them God ideas. And because you give them God ideas, they start to respect you. They really respect you. And because they respect you, they really find it so easy to listen to you. So obedience was never a problem at all. Discipline was never a problem. Short periods of time was a problem. We had to sort it out. But generally speaking, such small problem because we invested in God and His kingdom and children learn from that. Life is not about me, it's about God. Let me give you one practical way of doing this. When your child is 10, 11 years old, you must take your child out of context to an extreme different context where the values are the right values. Like we took our children to Mother Teresa's home in Calcutta and we served dying people so that our teenage children, 10, 13 and 16 years old at that time, that they can look at life from a, with a different perspective. They came from that and from that day until they finished their teenage life, they never complained and were never demanding, ever demanding spirit. It just disappeared out of their lives. Why? They could see people that really struggled and they were just so grateful and thankful that they did not struggle like that while they were serving the dying people. I could never teach them this. You have to expose them to a situation like this and all the demands just disappear completely. So that when my wife walking one day into the house and say, can we turn our house into an orphanage? All of them said, yes, mom. We never did that. But they were, that was the attitude. We rather than took care of 360 orphans outside the house in different other ways. You understand? Convergence. You live with authority. And when you live with authority, your wife doesn't watch, wait for you when you come back home. What did you do the whole day? And what did I get from that this whole day? No. We walk into the house. She's there and say, isn't this wonderful? that you spend your life today on something worthwhile that can outlast us all. That does not only create the respect from your children, but it creates the respect from your wife as well. And now I'll give to Jenny to say, and the woman's role in this balanced life starts with? Validation. Yes. Validation means to honor and to respect and to, to let somebody shine. So we must do this for our husbands. Now perhaps I can, I can, perhaps, okay, this will go. Perhaps I can demonstrate this with a story. The story comes from Cassie's mother. So um, when Cassie was a little boy, he was not always such a good little boy. <laughs> Anyway, I was... You're right. <laughs> okay. The, the story goes that um, Cassie's father was a good father, but he was a very strict father. And he believed in discipline, and he sometimes talked in a very abrupt manner. Now, there were six children, and Cassie was somewhere in the middle, and very often his father would say, okay, boom, 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 boom. And, and Cassie's mother would realize that this is not going to work very well. So she would say to her husband, um, my husband, can you just speak a little while in the bedroom? 
So he went, okay, and you go to the bedroom. But Cassie, because he was being a naughty boy, he realized something was going on and he wanted to hear what was mommy going to say to daddy in the bedroom. So, so he would actually wait until the door was closed and then he would listen by the door. And inside he would hear. His mother would say, my dear husband, you know, if you read this thing this way, then the children would love it and it would really work very well. Then he would say, whoa, 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 I don't. My dear husband, you know, really, if we do it this way, it's going to be super and it'll happen and it'll be a wonderful thing for the children. So he says, okay, okay, okay. So Cassie heard them coming, so he quickly ran back to the room. And his father came out, and the mother came out, and he said to him, Children, we are going to do this, this way. And Cassie thought, oh my word, this is actually mommy's idea. And he looked at mommy, and mommy said, that's a wonderful idea. Children, don't you think that's going to be wonderful? And then she turned to the eldest um, child, which was Henny, and he said, Henny, don't you think that's going to be a good idea? And then he said, yes. And all the other children said, yes, yes, yes. And Cassie was sitting there, and he thought, oh my word. Mommy, you are brilliant. It was actually your idea. And if we think of the story, if his mother had undermined the father in front of the children and said, no, we must do it this way, would it have been good for the family? It wouldn't have been good for the family. And she sacrificed her right of being right, because we as women like to be right, don't we? <laughs> we like to, and we sometimes argue with our husbands because we know we're right. But sometimes it's not always good for the family to be right. It's not always good for the children to be right. And this, this brilliant mother, my mother-in-law, and I really honor her, she gave up her right to be right sometimes because she kept the crown on her husband's head.